welcome to a wealthy place where inspiration, motivation, empowerment, and education is the flavor of our broadcast. And I am Brenda Lee Wells, your host, and we are just so excited that you have joined us today. And my God, family, what again, another week it has been. I know I say that every time that I'm here, or that we're come together, that we visit, but the journey is continuing and it's going strong. Oh my, and of course, you know, the different transitions that's been happening with the pandemic and the COVID-19 and, and now we you know, the mandatory mask wearing and, you know, it's just, we're just continuing to pray for everyone, especially our essential workers that are on the front line. A great big God bless you. And we're just praying the covering of God over you, which kind of also takes us into this next series. God had been dealing with me over the past week in the, in the late hours, we or we hours of the morning, he's been dealing with me about, you know, taking a little break. So we're going to take a pause for the cause. We're going to take a little bit of break from our normally scheduled programming. Yes, we're going to continue to encourage you. Yes, we're going to continue to educate you and empower you. But we're going to just kind of flow with the way things are and the, the, the tone and the uh, temperature of our nation as well as the temperature of our world with healing. God said, Brenda, it's time to heal. Let's focus on the healing. I know we hear so much about the numbers of deaths, the number of sickness, the number of the diseases, and the number of individuals that are, are being attacked by this treacherous virus. Well, God said he wants us to focus on it's time to heal. And not just from a physical perspective, but he said it's time to heal spiritually. It's time to heal in our soul. It's time to heal in our bodies. It's time to heal mentally in any, every, any and every capacity. God is saying it's time to heal. And, when he, and dealing with me concerning that, he just brought back to my remembrance, it was eight years ago when I first went to the record studio or the recording studio to start working on my CD, which just so happens to be entitled, It's Time to Heal. And it was based on a poem, I'm sorry, a play that I had written several years ago entitled Secret Pain. And some of it, of course, is attributable to my life. There's so many things that are going on in life that people don't even understand or realize what situations individuals are going through in their homes that no one knows about and that they're operating or they're living with a secret pain. And so God had me to pin out a play, which later led to the CD, It's Time to Heal. Well, he said, now let's bring it full circle that it's time to heal in our land. And of course, with the time to heal, we're going to, of course, we're going to go to the word of God. But in the interim, I just want to just take a moment to extend my condolences. We lost a great giant in the industry and in, um, the music industry recently on April the 2nd, and he's close to home, Mr. Von Mason. So I just want to really dedicate this show to Mr. Von Mason and his family. And again, extend our condolences, our love, our thoughts, and our prayers are with all of you, with his family and friends. He was truly loved. And we will ha actually have a special guest on the show today who was a close personal friend of Mr. Mason. I had the beautiful opportunity, privilege, and honor to meet him. As a matter of fact, it was 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years ago in August when I did the debut of Quitting is Not an Option. He recorded that video at that show. I was the opening act. And late years later, when I wanted to be able to use that video clip, he owned the rights to it. I wanted to use that video clip and some other friend of mine reached out to him and he said, absolutely, oh, for sure. He remembered me. We had a wonderful conversation during that show, that event back in August of 2010. I was able to purchase his book, the, um, the, the I'm sorry, the business of the music business Bible survival kit. I got it. The business music Bible survival kit. So that was, that's a great instrument for anyone who's interested in getting into the music industry. I can encourage you to Google it. The man was just such a wealth of information and definitely left a tremendous legacy and mark here. So we're going to miss you, Mr. Von Macy, but Mason, but we say, you know, rest in heavenly peace. So we're going to continue on with it's time to heal with the starting with the word and over the next several 
episodes. We're going to have individuals who will be here talking with us from a spiritual healing. We're going to have someone talking to us from a mental and healing of the soul. We'll have a life coach here. We'll have someone, the nutritionist, someone else will be talking about how to heal with our body. Of course, last week we had someone talking about healing for our finances. But today, the specific topic is the ministry of music, that there is healing in music. So what gives us the right to even expect healing? Well, let's go to the Word of God for our inspiration and our encouragement and our motivation. And we're going to start with Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. And this word is written throughout the Bible that we talk about and this was the prophecy about Jesus before he manifested in the earth. But it gives us a glimpse of what he was coming to do. And it says in verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed let me hear you say that with his stripes we are healed okay now let's go to a confirmation of that and that's in second peter's the second chapter i'm sorry first peter it's first peter the second chapter and the 24th verse, and it states, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live to righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So this isn't even saying in the going into the future, but this is past tense, which means that present tense you were already healed. Okay, well, let's keep on flowing. You see all these old tabs? Yes, this is the prescription. And let me do, do my little disclaimer right now. No, I'm not a medical doctor. So whatever medical prescriptions the doctor is telling you to take is according to your faith. Continue to take the, the natural prescription, take the natural medication, but also take the word of God for your medication as well. Because we know heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is forever. So let's continue with the next prescription. And I'm believing healing for myself as well. So I'm believing for miracles going to break out in the midst of this word, in the midst of these broadcasts over the episodes. I'm expecting to hear testimonies, even my own personal testimony. I'm expecting to be able to share with you regarding health healing and manifestations and i'm going straight again i'm taking this word for myself and that's in psalms 107 19 20. then they cried to the lord in their trouble anybody experiencing some trouble well god says right here they cried and he saves them out of their distresses so whatever distress cry god hears he answers, he saves but then here's the next instruction it says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Hallelujah. That's a great word. That's a great word of motivation, encouragement, demonstration, empowerment, and anything else you want to call it. The word. That's what we're in. The word. Well, so come on with me. Come on. Let's come over this journey to a wealthy place of your healing in this word. We're going to keep it moving straight on over to Matthew the eighth chapter and the 16th verse. And this is concerning Jesus. When the evening was come, they brought to him, Jesus, many that were possessed with devils. And we know some people who, are, they may not admit it, but are possessed with devils or even being oppressed by devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all. All that was sick, not some. He said he healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. He out of mouth of two or three witnesses, let the word of God be established. Well, we're not done yet, so come on, let's keep it moving. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. 
the 18th and the 19th verse, and this is one of my all-time favorites. I don't know if you have any favorites, but this is one of my all-time favorites because this is Jesus' mission statement as to why he came even into the earth. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So those whose hearts may be broken, whether it's emotionally or whether it's physically or financial, whatever capacity your heart is broken, he came to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to those who are held captive and to recover the sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are bruised. So we see the word of God is life, it's health, it's healing, it's wealth, it's everything that we need. It's right here in the word of God. So I just want to continue to encourage you to, of course, not quit in the midst of your process and understand that it is a process. There is a process to your healing, whether that healing is spiritual. It's a process. Okay, the hurt happened. But are you going to continue to keep on hurting or do you want to be healed? Over and over time, many times you'll see where Jesus, the person who wanted to come and be healed, Jesus looked at them and said, do you want to be whole? He said, well, it's according to your faith. Or he said, well, take up your bed and walk. Well, I'm encouraging you. I'm not dispelling anything that you went through to hurt. I've gone through many hurts. I went through spiritual hurt. I went through church hurt. But you can make a decision. You can be the victim or you can choose to be the victor. And I choose to be the victor. I say victory is mine. And I say victory is yours in the name of King Jesus. That by his stripes, you are healed spiritually. By his stripes, you are healed in your soul, in your mind, and by, your, by his stripes, you are healed in your body and even financially. He wants us whole. He said he came that we may be complete and tired, wanting for nothing. So that's what these next several episodes is going to be regarding healing. But we're going to focus on the musical attributes of the healing process. And I am so excited to be able to have a friend slash mentor slash teacher slash my personal producer is going to share with us Mr. Richard. I call him Maestro <laughs> Mosley with GS Productions. He is here with us and he's going to be sharing. Again, he's a very personal friend of Vaughn Mason and we're going to be looking forward. And when we come back, he's going to share his gift of music as well as education and inspiration. And we'll be right back. We'll see you soon. And welcome back to A Wealthy Place. And I know that was a lot of word we were in, but of course we are word people. And when it comes to healing, I know the doctors are telling you different things to do. And with taking your medicine, of course, we had our disclaimer earlier that we are not doctors. So, of course, you want to always continue to, to take your medicine, take your prescription. But here's an additional prescription is the word of God because he said he sent his word to heal you. So you want to continue to encourage yourself with the word as, as well as whatever pharmaceutical med medicines that you're taking. But also with this segment or this series that we're doing, it's time to heal spirit, soul, and body. That's going to be the series over the next several weeks. But today's specific topic is the ministry of music. Do you know there is healing in music? I'm sure as many of you, you understand that when you listen to music, it puts you in a separate, a certain mindset, a certain mode, a set, certain type of mentality. Well, that was always pre-designed even from the foundations of this world. But we're going to even take a look from the word of God, how the ministry of music has elements to be able to heal you and to usher in the presence of the, and, uh, the anointing of God. So we're going to go to the book of Samuel. And many of you may be familiar with this account when Samuel, unfortunately, the presence of God had departed from Samuel, so he was being tormented. And sometimes when we feel a little bit down, feel a little bit low, depressed, we'll turn on our favorite song, our favorite musician, and get up and start dancing, or just even to get into a mood of just relaxation, relaxation if we're feel, feeling anxious. 
Well, this is even from the word of God happened with David and Saul. So in the book of Samuel, the first chapter, I mean, first, I'm sorry, book, first Samuel, the 16th chapter and the 14th verse, it reads, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said to him, behold, now an evil spirit from God troubles you. Let our Lord now command your servants, which are before you, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon you, that he shall play with his hand, and you shall be well. Isn't that what we're talking about? Being well, being healed, being whole. And Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the, Beth the, Beth I'm sorry, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in manners, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. My God, what a resume that David had. He's cunning and playing. He's skillful. He's not just to be a tickling at the peel or tickling at the heart. No, he has the skill and the, from playing. And he's also valiant, valiant. And he's also a man of war. Prudent. He's smart. He's knowledgeable. He's a man of understanding. And wasn't hard to look at, okay? He was kind of comely to look at him with the eyes. And but most of all, the most important aspect of this whole thing is that the Lord is with him. Wherefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David, your son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took him a donkey laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them to David as David his son to Saul. So he gave also provided gifts for David to take to the king. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And Saul loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. And Saul said to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray you, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil, from, uh, evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the spirit that was evil departed from him. Now here's the word that says what the, the power of music can do. But we also find that again also in 2 Kings, the third chapter, the 14th through the 15th verse, that even to usher in the presence of God, that even the prophet and those who are in authority will call on the ministry of the minstrel or the musician. And the 14th verse says, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts live, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look towards you nor see you. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. So that's what we want to be able to usher in the ministry of the music, to usher in also and encourage in our healing process. And I couldn't think of a, what, another better person to invite to be on the show today than my dear friend, Mr. Richard Maestro <laughs> Mosley <laughs> to be on the show with us today to share and talk about the ministry and the power of healing through worship and ushering in the presence of God through the ministry of music. And then we're also going to talk about, because not only is he a musician, he's also a producer. He does done a phenomenal job of helping other individuals to share their gift of music, to share their ministry of song. So we're going to talk to on that as well. And then we spoke earlier that we were dedicating this show today to the uh, um, amazing and the great late Mr. Vaughn Mason, who passed um, earlier this month. 
And so Richard was actually a very personal friend of his. So we're going to share some information. So Richard, welcome to a wealthy place. Glad to be here. <laughs> we are so glad, glad here. To, so glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Richard. Well, um, I've been playing since seven. Um, wow. Yeah, um, I started actually, my grandmother had to watch this old piano, big old piano, all right. And it had a chair on it that spin. So one day, I'm, I didn't know what this thing was. So I got on the chair to play the chair. I ain't know nothing about the piano. <laughs> and while I was spinning on the chair, I pushed down on the piano, and it made the sound when I, oh, wow. when I turned around. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm. So I started banging on it. And time went on, and gradually I did two fingers, and, and then I clearly believe God just gave me the gift of playing. Wow. And I was actually playing in elementary school. I would play... The um, America the Beautiful mm -hmm. you know, in elementary school. Now, have you taken any type of lessons? No you, lessons. You I, didn't get lessons. I didn't get lessons until 12. Man. And my teacher was mad with me because she kept saying, you're not reading. You're playing with your head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, as time went on, I, you know, I got real serious with her. Mm -hmm. She was from Peabody, and okay. I got real serious. So now I read and play by ear. Wow. Um, I, actually, I play anything. I, actually, I can play something. I only have to be at the keyboard. Okay. If I hear it, I'm playing it already. I don't really? need a keyboard. Like, yeah, if I hear it, I'm already playing it. Well, I'm a witness to, to that. <laughs> yeah, I just go to the keyboard just to play it out. But mm. if I hear it, mm -hmm. I can see it and I'm playing it while it while it's playing. Okay. Yeah, but that's a gift from God, and mm -hmm. and God gifts us for for to be a blessing to the people and then return back to God. Right. See, it's not Absolutely. just for us. We still bless each other because mm -hmm. God, ain't, he's not saying just for me and I don't want you to have anything. Mm -hmm. We bless others because he said, how can you say you love me who you have not seen? You can't love your brother mm. every day. That's a good So word. same with the music. You you bless them with the music and then in turn, they offer it back up to God because mm -hmm. it came from him. Mm -hmm. So it's giving it back to God. Absolutely. And that's what music is all about. It's for healing. And you say it's time to heal time is what to we've heal. been talking about. And that's what music does. It actually can heal. You know, people people may not even know sometimes. Um, the lyrics means a lot mm -hmm. because when you when you hear the lyrics, you actually it, the music. I, I look at it like this: the the lyrics are within a car, and the music is the car, mm. and it's driving, and it, that's taking the lyrics and those words are driving right to the destination of your heart where okay. it needs to go. I like that. And they work <laughs> together. Right. Yes. So, so we talk about melodies and we talk about mm -hmm. harmony and yeah, all of that. All of that. Yeah, all of that together. Mm -hmm. um, it's like it's unlim It's limitless. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can do just a, a melody, and that's fine. You can do a, a melody a cappella without music. That's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, you can add the music. You can add the orchestra. You can add the vocal backgrounds. You can do. It's all. It's all good. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't discredit none of it. It's all good, and it's right. and it's based on the receptive heart. That's it. You found some people need more. Mm -hmm. You know, you could sing. And some people go, ah, I didn't get nothing out of that. Mm. Where one person, you don't have to say too much, and they, they got a whole lot out of it. It depends and on where they know, are. It depends on where they are. Yes, so is. that means a, a lot. And that's saying how God operates with, works with us. Mm -hmm. If the heart is willing to receive, he'll give more to that person who's mm. willing to receive of him. But somebody who's like, ah, don't take all that, well, guess what? You won't get all of that. Hey, that's it. <laughs> yeah. To, to, to decree that you're willing to receive. That's right. He That's said, right. according to your faith. That's according to your faith. The bottom line. That's right. So I know, I, and there's you being a minister of music. Was that always the case, though? Let me ask you that. Um, no, I played, you know, secular for years. Okay. Um, I played out, and, and I would get behind stage. And, and as a matter of fact, like I was talking about Elder Barge and them, mm -hmm. and Switch, I remember going behind stage. They didn't know me, and, and I was, I just, well, they, come on. I, when we went out to wow. eat, I went out to eat breakfast with Luther. And when it was, mm. you know, around okay. and everything. And that's, and that's through different friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And they connected me. And we just, and, and he was down early. Because I sat at the table with him. We ate, you know, we talked. And oh, wow. He gave me some words of wisdom. Okay. You know, I didn't, at the time, I didn't understand, per se. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, I had some, I said, I like he to follow He sowed that seed. Your, yeah, he sowed that seed. Mm -hmm. I said, I'd like to follow in your footsteps. Mm -hmm. And he said, he looked at me real serious, like, mm -hmm. he was eating. And he looked over and he said, I have some big tracks. So at the time, I didn't really, I didn't catch that until years mm. later. And I said, that's what he meant. What mm. he meant was, he didn't just get there by just doing nothing. Mm. He had to work to get there. And that's what I tell my students now, because I do vocal sessions. I have okay. students that I give vocal lessons. I mm -hmm. tell them, 
you have to do your homework, you know. Because if, if you don't, it, it's not going to be there. And everybody's not so hard on you. That, you know, Some people, when they see, they know. Like if I listen to someone and they, they're not 100%, mm -hmm. I say, well, I can tell. Well, they just didn't have the time to do this or something happened. Mm -hmm. I don't judge them, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how music is. Mm -hmm. Don't judge it too hard. You know. So what, what would you tell our viewers that, that there are some who are watching and say, you know what, I had this song that, whether they believe God gave it to them, mm -hmm. or it's just a song that they just want to be able to share, and they feel like that they want to record, what should they do? What would be the process for them to do that? Well, um, I would say if they can write it down, if they know the lyrics, write the lyrics down. Okay. Because I have put music to songs that just had lyrics. Okay. They didn't have nothing. As a matter of fact, I know people who just had lyrics, no melody. It was like mm. a poem, man. And I put the music to it. Okay. I arranged the, the lead vocal and the background for them. And, mm -hmm. and there it was. It was a complete song. Mm. You know. So really, it's really, long as you can dictate to the producer what you have in your heart or what you, you hear, mm -hmm. as much as possible. And then the producer take from there and then do take to the next level. Mm -hmm. So what type of time around time as, as far as a song or does it well, really depend on... It depends on how picky, picky the person gets. Okay. Um, some people are not too picky, and and as, if it's if you just leave it up to me and you give me a melody and you say I want to do this, mm -hmm. I could do a complete song with the lead vocal, background vocal, all the music. I could actually do that probably within eight hours. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, finished. So basically, yeah, a, finished. a regular day. Yeah, finished. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. they're really picky, mm -hmm. I do a part of it. Tell them come back another day, and we we'll keep on working it until we get what they. You know what they see or want. You know because sometimes they don't know what they want until they hear it. Mm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So as gradually as it starts to like painting, as the picture starts mm. to unfold and they start to see the image, now they start to say what other details they okay. want to put in that picture. Gotcha. And that's what it is with with production. It's like as they gradually see it. Like me as a producer, mm -hmm. I see most of the stuff finished. Like when they bring it, I already see the, the mm. end of it. You know, you I see just, the end from the beginning. Yeah, I see it already. <laughs> So, and I'll tell them, I'll say, this is a nice song. And they say, yeah, but, and I'm already, hey, I already saw that. Because mm -hmm. I know, I can hear, I, I can't explain it. Mm -hmm. All I know is when I hear it, I know that this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And can bring it to that, that point where people can say, wow, I really like this. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, because we know that we you've met several individuals in the, in the secular realm as well as in, the um this the spiritual as well as um, the gospel. Mm -hmm. But we recently I was talking earlier, we dedicated this show to Von Mason. I know that you were yeah. a personal friend of his. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about, you yeah. know, as of course extending our condolences, continue, yeah. you know, to yeah. his family as yeah. well as to you. Yeah. But tell tell us a little bit about Von Mason. Well Von I met Von um I was working in a music store. Okay. At the time it was called Mars Music. I remember Mars Music. Yeah, I'm telling Powers you. Lane. I remember. Yeah. Okay, I remember. And I was at the front desk working. And, you know, this particular day, Vaughn came in with a friend, Ezel, who's a drummer, friend, mm -hmm. friend of ours, too. And they both walked in. And I I think I got to talking to Ezel first. And that's how I ended up getting introduced to Vaughn. Mm. Right, off, right from off the bat, Vaughn was like real, old, very. I mean, Vaughn, I don't say this, if you can't get along with Vaughn, you can't get along with anybody. That's how I would say it. Because people say that about me. Because he's not a, he wasn't a bad person. He, he, he would receive you. You know, he didn't judge you. He was open. And we hit it right off. And that was like, man, like um, 27 years ago, I believe. Oh um, and we became real friends. I did a lot of his projects. I, I produced um, with him, co-produced on some things. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff that I he's done, I'm in there. I'm doing mm. background vocals. Um, I played strings, um, bass on keys, and okay. different keys sound. Even Dimitri, um, which was his right. artist mm -hmm. that does the dancing. Dimitri um, Yeah, I yeah. gave him some vocal coaching, vocal okay. lessons. And right now, I'm still working with Dimitri. He called me, matter of fact, I think two days ago, he okay. wanted me to see if I could do work on something that he is, he heard in there. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we can get Dimitri on 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 uh, so show in the future. We 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 gonna get we'll him, get him in. on. Y'all y'all know y'all have seen Dimitri Reeves dancing yeah. around. Yeah. You know Michael we're Jackson. Him he him. he, yes, he is phenomenal. I'm gonna share yeah. how how I um initially right. met Dimitri. Yes. But Tell he, me he when. is he he is phenomenal yeah. and definitely a protege of Von yeah. Mason, and yeah. I'm very excited. So yeah, so share some more about about Von. Yeah, and um, you know, one time, you know, I have a um. Uh, a Cadillac coupe, 
a red Cadillac coupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vaughn saw my Cadillac coupe. And he's like, man, that's nice. That's really nice, man. He said, that's really nice. That's how much I paid. I told him whatever. He said, that's really nice. Man, why about maybe three weeks later, he gives me a call. He said, hey, man. I said, hey, how you doing, Vaughn? He said, man, why you had to let me see that mm -hmm. car? No, why he did didn't. No, he didn't know. He why didn't. did Vaughn tell me that he didn't? You know, this is hitting my heart a little bit. Aww. He said, man, I caught a plane, flew to Texas. Oh, we got like that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and guess what? He drives back with the exact same car. Yes. Oh, so y'all were soul tied friends yes. like, like, like Jonathan and Dave. Yes, and he <laughs> drove back with it, and, and his was oh. a little better than mine because he had the V, the, mm. with the, you know, the more the powerful engine and uh -huh. the, the hood raised and uh, all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I and Vaughn style, right? <laughs> yeah, Vaughn style. And, um, and one thing that, that got me, and I had to ask Vaughn, um, I don't know, people who know him, I don't know if they ever knew it, but on his tag license plate he had failure mm. and I and I said Vaughn I said you know because we were taught words mm -hmm. power powerful and they mean something so I said Vaughn why did you put failure on your mm -hmm. license plate and he looked at me you know it hit my heart again he looked at me and he said he said you know what when I come out the house and I get on my porch and I look at that tag plate mm -hmm. that says failure. He say, I say, no, I'm not. I'm okay. not going to be a failure. He say, it, when I look at it, it makes me work harder. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and when I heard it, I said, wow. wow. He gave me a whole perspective on, mm -hmm. on words. Because him looking at that, instead of it making him feel like mm -hmm. a failure, it made him say, I will not be a failure. Mm -hmm. And Vaughn was not a failure. Vaughn not did so many things. Place. Vaughn, everything he would touch would prosper. I mean, he told me so many stories. I mean, he, Vaughn was getting money for things that I, I'm looking at, like, how, for just that? Mm. I mean, little things. And, and, and another thing, Vaughn, would, he was real generous. He would, mm -hmm. And he was fair. Because mm -hmm. he told me some stories about when the songs that he did. Mm -hmm. um, he gave um, parts of the, you know, the, the money the you know, for the royalties yeah. to people that didn't really, I guess, didn't deserve it, but because wow. they were a part in the sense, he still did that. Wow. And that, and you know, there are people who will not only not give you, they wouldn't mm. give you they what you know you put it. Yeah. <laughs> they try to take yours. Yes. And, and that, Vaughn, and I'm going to tell you another thing that Vaughn did mm -hmm. that was very personal. I was living in a house and the, the sink was, the, the water was leaking under the floor in the kitchen mm -hmm. and it went under the, the floorboard and it wet the floor and it got you know, dry rot and everything. It was just messed up and needed to be fixed. Um, Vaughn told me, he said, man, I could fix that for you. You know, and I'm, you know, getting my money straight, you know, because I'm like, oh, well, mm -hmm. i got to get this straight. Excuse me. So Vaughn comes by one day with his truck. He said, come on, man, let's go to um, Home Depot. I was like, I said, okay. So I'm getting my money together. He mm -hmm. said, I'm going in and um, we're going to get, you got to get the material. He said, you're going to need this. He measured everything, you know, before I make wow. my story short. He had measured everything, uh -huh. said what we're going to need. He went in the store. And I'm going in there and I'm getting my money. I said, I said, well, I got it. He said, he said, well, I tell you what, look, just, just give me, he said, just give me the money for, and let me put it this way. What I gave Vaughn money for was, I don't know, some kind of screws or something here, because he had got the wood from somewhere Anyway, I had to give him, I don't think it was like $60. Oh, my goodness, to fix all of that. To fix a floor that we know would have cost $2,500 or more mm. to fix. Yes, that and I hard. kept saying, Von, yeah, Von said, Von, Von said, man, don't give me nothing. Mm. But, you know, because Vaughn's heart was like that, mm. I did things for Vaughn that I didn't, you know, you, you, sure. you can't help it. Mm -hmm. I'm on his projects, anything that I played on, mm -hmm. that was just, hey, buddy, just would you mm -hmm. call me? Here I am. I played on it. He just called me. He came to my house one time. He said, what you doing? This is Vaughn. Mm -hmm. He called me. He said, hey, what you doing? I said, oh, I'm just, just um, in the studio just going over a mix. Mm -hmm. He said, um, he said, well, um, he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come up there. He didn't say anything about what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. He said, all right, I'm coming up there. So he said, I should be about 20 minutes. You know, he wasn't too far from me. Mm -hmm. So um, Vaughn came up. 
came in. Mm -hmm. He said, turn it on. I turned on the thing, and he got back in the chair, laid back in. I had a couch. He laid back on the couch, and he said, play it. And I played it. He said, you know what? He said, what you, you got driving that song? And I had a little something in it driving the song, a certain mm -hmm. sound. We call it driving. It's like a lead thing okay. that's that more dominant in the song mm -hmm. than any other instrument. Mm -hmm. And that was driving. That's what I had driving the song. Okay. He said, he said, tell you what, put, turn that down. He said, he named another instrument. He said, pull that up. So I pulled that instrument up. And then I listened. And all of a sudden, I heard the song like, mm -hmm. and it started to change, and it was hit, hitting a little wow. hard. He said, that's what you drive the song with. And it just started. I, you on my studio right now, oh I got goodness. Vaughn's name on those tracks because mm. I put Vaughn. Vaughn. That, because that one little. Yeah. That. Yeah, one, that one little ingredient, that's just a little spice. Yes, Vaughn, was, <laughs> Vaughn had an excellent ear. He was a phenomenal mm -hmm. producer. I really believe that Vaughn didn't get the recognition that he I should agree. have gotten because he was really, really good. I mean, he could come in and he would hear it and boom, there it is. And he was very humble. He Vaughn never came to me. And, you know, Vaughn taught me a lot of what I know. Vaughn never came to me and said, you know, um, you know you, you're doing good, but you're just not there, brother. He never came to me like that. Mm -hmm. You know what Vaughn would do? Vaughn would look at me and he would he would do something. He said, um, he said, don't you think you should turn turn that up a little bit? Mm. And I go, yeah. He said, don't you think? I said, yeah. He said, <laughs> he said, and he, he said, yeah. He said, what? Like that? He would look. He almost want to make you laugh because mm. he would be like, huh? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, okay, and then. But he didn't say, what is that? You know, mm. yeah. And and I would turn, he would show me things. And, and matter of fact, he he would tweak certain things. Mm -hmm. And he would he say, um, he said, what's that? And then he would make you laugh sometimes. He would say, what's that right there? And I said, oh, I put that there. He said, why do you put that there? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he would tell, he told me something else. He said, he said, he said, listen, and I'm listening. He said, do you hear it? He said, yeah, but you got to look for it, right? Mm. I said, yeah. He said, well, if you got to do that, you don't need it. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, sense. And I would take it out. And that's what learnt, he learned me mm. about sound and mm. placement. Because what that taught me was, and what he told me was, things that don't matter take up space. And actually, mm. the absence of sound, yes, the absence of sound is what really makes the music. Mm. It's not the sound mm. that makes the music. It's the absence the of the sound. That, that take them take them away because those things allow the things that matter to shine through. You know I mean, what I mean? We're just on that. Y'all yeah. catch that? The things yeah. don't matter. The things that don't matter. That's right. Take, take up it, space. They take up space. Get rid, get rid of it. Because when you get rid of that, the things that do matter have room to expand. Mm. And that, that's what makes that sound pop out. Mm. Because just taking away things, all of a sudden it kicks, the sound the tracks mm. kick, you know? And the sound is hitting you, you know? And that's what he taught me. And, uh. and right now today, that's what I do. Some of my older stuff, mm -hmm. you could tell was more me mm -hmm. before Vaughn, you mm. know, giving me, you know, learning. And then my recent stuff, you can tell it's, it's after Vaughn, you can hear the difference. Quality. The AV, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the BB and the AV. That's right. He, he produces a light car. Mm -hmm. um, they are not considered bad unless you drive it and you find there's a, a fault in it. You mm -hmm. know, something wrong with it. Looking at it, it, it can look really good. And producers are like that until you get down into their production. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the difference between a good producer, maybe, or a bad producer. But that is still not to say that they are bad to the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't like, meaning compared to something else mm -hmm. and to the likes of someone else, that may be considered bad. But on a scale, mm -hmm. there are no bad producers mm -hmm. because it's just a matter of a difference of, of opinion. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could have one producer do a song. As a matter of fact, you have one song and have 20 producers come in and each producer is going to see something differently mm -hmm. in that song or do something differently in that song. Doesn't mean the song is bad. One may make it better, though. We can mm -hmm. say that. Won't mean that it's unacceptable. Right. But one may make it more acceptable. Different perceptions. Yes, yes. Because 
everybody has a different ear mm -hmm. because that's really what drives a producer, his ear. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it goes by the ear. And that's what I tell people um, when you're mastering a song. Mm -hmm. um, we can get real technical, but it's all based on the ear. Mm -hmm. Like you got a $2 million studio mm -hmm. and you got a $1,000 studio. Mm -hmm. The difference in the $2 million studio is that the equipment that they have. Mm -hmm. The difference in the $1,000 studio is the equipment that they have. Mm -hmm. The equipment that they have won't live up to that equipment, mm -hmm. but their ear can live up to that. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Because if they can hear that, they can tweak what they have mm -hmm. to get there. They may can't do it on a mass, large scale, mm -hmm. but they can still get a quality that will still mm -hmm. stay hang with theirs. When they, okay. they will be able to stand on the same leg mm -hmm. footing. Yeah. That, that's a whole lot of information that, yeah. that you share, but I mean, but it's, again, both that, that experience that you've had from various in, interactions, whether it was a Vaughn or just, you know, just in operating in the, the industry, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot of information to be able to share with individuals. So let me ask you this, Richard, how, how can somebody get in contact with you? Because like I said, they have their own special project. What's mm -hmm. the best way to get in contact with well, you? Well, you can email me at GS. Prod, that's G S P R O D okay. zero two one at Gmail. That's G S P, which stands for God's Son Production. Mm, okay, I was yeah. wondering what the G S Production. God's goes Son for. Production. Okay. And um, if you if you email me, I don't get my numbers out because I sure. get bombarded by no, a lot of no people fun. who are not really serious about what they're doing, mm -hmm. and, and it's takes up like the space we're talking about about the music. Absolutely. It right. Takes up space for right. those who really did. Right. Yeah, but that's how you can reach me. Um Let's give it to them one more time. Yes, G S P R O D zero two one at Gmail, which stands for God's Sons Production. Wonderful. Well you know it just really would not be fair with all this information. I mean Richard is so diverse in so many various areas. But the one thing we haven't heard, and of course you can hear the information, you can hear the education, but you haven't heard the real sound. You haven't ha actually experienced the ministry of the music through Richard. So when we come back, we're going to have Maestro is going to share some of this healing through music, his ministry of music. Richard, we want to thank you again so much for coming and for sharing with us and sharing your experience with Vaughn Mason. So, of course, you will yeah. definitely be back again. Yeah. And we'll be right back with A Wealthy Place. All right. Because of your grace that I am here
welcome back to a wealthy place and did not tell you that was quite a bit of information and inspiration that Richard Maestro <laughs> Mosley shared with us. Oh my God, a totally anointed man of God, full of the heart of God, but definitely full of the skill and talent and ability as we talked about in the early portion of the show that the healing ministry powers the the grace of God is the grace of God that's going to keep us and sustain us and the mercy of God that will help to heal this land in the midst of everything that we're going on that's going on so we're just thanking God again for Richard coming and sharing his gifts his talent his ability his skill and just his passion with all of us and so again we want you to continue to have a blessed week we look forward to seeing you at our next episode please stay in touch a wealthy place is up and running our website www.awealthyplace.org will have the scriptures that we shared with you today you can also reach out to us via email a wealthy place now at outlook.com again a wealthy place now at outlook.com so again we know that so many of you are, are experiencing different things and you know pains and and things that you think oh, god doesn't know about well trust me he knows he definitely knows and he cares and he's here to heal so we're going to close out this segment with a special song that god laid on my heart just for you and we look forward to seeing you at a wealthy place i'll see you next time family i love you we worship you, God. Oh, we thank you, Father. So, God, even in the midst of what's going on in this environment, in this atmosphere all over the world, Father, we know that you are forever, God. You are forever loving, God. You are forever caring, God. And, Father, God, even in the midst of the healing, you said it's time to heal. But many were saying so many are like, but you don't know my hurt. You don't know my pain. You don't know what I've gone through, Brenda. How can he heal me? Because he is the healer. Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open the eyes of the blind. He was wounded for you so that you could be made whole. So that's why I know without a shadow.
Thank you.